In our last video, we worked through a problem on the journal entries of job order costing. This video, we're going to continue that problem. So we've completed part one of the problem, and if you want to see that, go back to our previous video. If you want to continue the problem, though, you've come to the right place. Let's look at part two. It says, is manufacturing overhead overapplied or underapplied, and by how much? Okay, so to do this is actually really easy. I'll explain it kind of as we're going. But to do it, we have to create a T account for manufacturing overhead. So let's go down to the very bottom here, the very end of our work, and let's make a T account for overhead. And what's a T account? It's a giant T. Wow, look at my neat writing there. That was supposed to be a straight line, nice and wavy. A giant T account for MOH. Okay, so what do we do in a T account? we fill in our journal entries into the T account. So I'm looking for any journal entry involving overhead. And I'll start at the top, journal entry A, and there's no overhead there. Journal entry B, debit overhead 32. So I'll go down here, debit overhead 32,000. I write debits on the left, credits on the right, just like my journal entries. C, no overhead. D, debit overhead 90,000. So based on journal entry D, I'm gonna debit my overhead 90. E, debit overhead 45. All right, let's debit overhead 45,000. F, debit overhead 15. Let's debit overhead 15,000. G, debit overhead 63. Okay, we'll debit overhead. Oh, my big fat hand got in the way there. We'll debit overhead 63,000 bucks. E, that was E, F, uh, debit overhead, oh no, we did F and G, sorry, debit overhead 63, H, debit overhead 96, debit overhead 96,000, um, and that's it, uh, oh no, I, credit overhead 300,000, I, credit overhead 300,000, and in J, no, and K, no, no overhead. Okay, so that's all of my overheads. I gotta summarize the debits and the credits, and the way we do it is we take the big side minus the small side, and the bigger side gets a balance. If you add up all the debits, you'll find these debits add up to $341,000. If you just add up this list, you get 341. Uh, and obviously 341 is bigger than 300, so I take the big side, 341, minus my small side 300 and I get a balance of $41,000 on the debit side. So I've done actually the work here of figuring out if overhead is over applied or under applied but I haven't explained anything. So let's see if we can understand what's going on here. The left hand side of our T account represents our actual overhead. And these are the things that actually happened, the bills that came in for indirect materials, indirect labor, and other types of overhead like our factory rent and things like that. And that's what actually happened. The right hand side represents our estimate for overhead. And the way we estimated overhead was using that predetermined overhead rate. Except for we don't use the word estimated for some reason with overhead. I don't know why we don't just call it estimated overhead. We call it applied overhead. And our overhead that we applied was $300,000. So our guess, our estimate was 300. What actually happened was 341. If our guess was perfect, we would have guessed 341, right? But our guess will never be perfect. We were off by 41. So the first question you might ask yourself was, well, why didn't I just use actual all along? I know actual. Well, it's great in accounting questions. You're always going to know actual by the time you're done. But unfortunately, in real life, there's things like property taxes where the bill doesn't come in for months. And you're having to apply overhead to jobs as they're happening. So you're having to tell, charge your clients based on how much the labor, the materials, and the overhead cost. And you want to know if you're making money on the jobs. But you can't wait for months for a property tax bill to come or some other bills to come in. So in accounting questions, you'll know all the information. In real life, you won't. So we have to make this estimate. We have to apply overhead. So our overhead, we guessed, was 300. The actual overhead was 341. Was our guess too high or too low? Well, the answer was too low. We didn't guess high enough. Our overhead is under applied. And how much is it under applied by? Well, 41K. We're under applied by $41,000. 
the next part of our question, part three, so this is part two, part three says, okay, it's under applied, fix it. Adjust or close overhead through cost of goods sold. So let me just read the question, make sure I'm not misleading here. Record a journal entry to close overhead to cost of goods sold. Okay, let's do it. So first of all, I want you to think about what's happening here. We're saying, look, we guessed 300, we guessed wrong. We were off by 41 grand. This one's saying, fix your overhead. Okay, so if I want to fix it, if I wanted a perfect guess, I would have credited my overhead by 341, not 300. So let's fix that. I got to credit my overhead by 41K more. Now, what account do I use to fix it? It says use cost of goods sold. So I'm going to debit cost of goods sold by 41K. And I fixed it. Done. Pretty easy. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, what if overhead was more on the on the credit side and less on the debit side? In other words, what if my actual was lower and my applied was higher? Well, then my overhead would be over applied, not under applied. And to fix it, I would debit my overhead and I would credit my cost of goods sold. You might also be saying, well, why do I debit COGS and not some other account? Well, in, in reality, you may be debiting other accounts. Most accounting questions I find you end up debiting COGS or uh, adjusting overhead through COGS. And here's why, it makes some sense. If we go back to where we applied our overhead, which was journal entry uh, I, we're saying we're putting our overhead into WIP. So we put $300,000 into WIP. And what the question is telling us is, no, we should have put 341 worth of overhead into WIP. We, we underestimated, this number should be 41. Well, let's look at what happens to our WIP then. Our WIP, a work in process gets finished it becomes a finished good then we turn around and we sell our finished good we credit finished goods and we debit cost of goods sold so we made a mistake up here we should have called this 341 this number debit finished goods credit whip presumably should have been 41 grand higher because we had 41,000 more in whip than what we thought and our cogs presumably should be 41 grand higher so when we fix it we don't fix our whip, we fix our cogs. But again, in other questions or in real life, you may end up fixing a different account. But in this case, it's simple enough just to fix cost of goods sold. Okay, we've completed part two, we've completed part three. In our next video, we're gonna prepare an income statement for this company and complete the question.